Welcome to Wake Up to Imagine. I know that you're a bit tired, you don't know what to do, you probably have a really hectic schedule. But right now we're going to do something that's going to ease the tension in your mind. It's the 3-3 breathing style. You take three very rapid inhales and three very rapid exhales. This is done to get your mind and your body to have the same pace and come into a synergy of connection and relaxation. The reason why we're prioritizing relaxation is because this is a day for our tranquil Tuesdays. This is where we celebrate tranquility, wellness, and relaxation. So let's try the 3 3 breathing style right now, okay? You're going to breathe in very quickly, three inhales, and then very quickly, three exhales. You're going to do that three times. It's odd. I know you've never done it before. It's interesting. But before you know it, you're like, oh, how do I feel calmer? How do I feel a bit different? That's interesting. Okay. <laughs> so here is our Wake Up To Imagine tip of the day. Today, we're going to be talking about goal setting. Setting a goal is often one of the most daunting things. People think a goal is a million dollars at the end of the year, trying to create these crazy unrealistic resolutions. But what we want to do is make these more feasible. Here's the reality, okay. A vision broken down into targeted objectives with a timeline becomes a plan. A plan actively moved towards an execution creates the reality of the goal. So what our job is to turn your dreams into reality. The name Wake Up To Imagine is not just a regular name for a show, but it's to make you wake up and imagine the very best possible future for yourself, for your society, and for your nation. So ask yourself, how am I setting my goals? That workout plan that you committed to, that you said, I'll do it yesterday, never happened. You know what tomorrow is? Tomorrow is a make-believe land that we tell ourselves. We will do the thing, we'll make it happen, but we never end up committing to ourselves. The biggest liars in the world are us because we give ourselves all these promises, all these words, and we never put any feasible action. Well, today we're going to break that horrible habit. We're going to break that bad habit to give you feasible goals. Let's say, for example, you want to start a business. Here are those, how we're going to strategically set goals for you to start that business. Firstly, do you have the necessary business plan? Businesses don't just require money all the time. Vision equals money. You see, it's not money equals vision. No, vision equals money. The money will always follow the vision, the idea, the plan. People, you shouldn't be begging people for your vision. You must have a convincing idea, a convincing passion that targets towards people's audiences that instantly attracts them towards your product, towards your sales. So do you have the business plan for that business, firstly? Secondly, how feasible is it? Do you have the time stretch? You work from eight to five. How many hours can you actively commit towards that goal of starting that business? three hours after work, so I'm saying from six to eight, I'm working on my business plan, I'm working on getting the customer sales, I'm cold calling, I'm making the necessary phone calls. Are you doing that? Now, finally, do I have people around me to support me? I know we live in a society that's so megalo, workaholics, like I can do anything by myself, but no man is an island. We live in a society because it's social. What people are around you, to make this goal a reality. I want us to start making schedules, calendars, digital reminders to actually make it a feasible thing. Not just your business, but a workout plan. Not just a workout plan, but scheduling your life. There are two things that, are, that many Zimbabweans are really bad at. Time management and patience. Statistically, I'm just saying the statistics. We're really impatient. I were really bad at keeping time. And patience and time go hand in hand. How are you working towards better managing your time? I'll give you the story of our champion of the day, Chinjirai Hoi. He was really good at time management. He was born in 1956 in Majiwa near Shawani, Rhodesia. 
He published numerous novels, poetry anthologies, and collections of essays, as well as tons of reflections. His work has been translated into multiple languages, such as Japanese, Dutch, and German. He's also won several awards, including the 1989 Noma Award for publishing in Africa. He wrote in both English and Shona, and his work has been translated into several other languages, and it's been likened to artists like Ngugi Wachiongo and Chinua Achebe. He was a fellow at the House of Culture in Stravanger in Norway as a part of the International Cities of Refugee Network at the time of his death in 2015. Writing a book, writing books, writing an anthology can be so time consuming amidst the horrors of war, amidst the horrors of abject poverty, amidst the difficulties faced in criticism. Where people would expect you to be a doctor or a lawyer or an engineer at that time, he was facing the war and there was nothing that he could do but translate his pain into the pen. How are you using your creative talent? How are you using your time to make your goals a reality? His goal was to be the best author that ever lived. Well, undeniably, he is written in the history books of Zimbabwe as one of the greatest authors ever. His books have inspired nations, motivated politicians, and empowered so many individuals. Do you want to be just traffic? Do you want to be a regular person who never achieved anything? Or do you just want to live your life? Average. Be incredible. Be unstoppable. Today on a Tranquil Tuesday, I recommend to take a nature walk, go to the Harare Botanical Gardens, and take time to yourself to really reflect on your goals for the rest of this year. The rest of these six months coming up, what are you actively working to make? A reality. See you. Faith is the belief in things that you cannot see. You can never lose faith. That's the key. You have to believe in something that you can't see. You have to believe when you don't see no way how. You have to buckle down and keep believing. Everything God wants you to have, he puts it in your imagination. Albert Einstein said imagination is everything. It's to preview the life's coming attractions. Everything you imagine is God showing you a preview of a coming attraction he has for you. And he puts it in your imagination so you can see what he got for you. So if you've been imagining that you're going to be rich one day, it's because God wants you to be rich. Now, when you going to ask him for it and are you going to wait for it to happen? Or are you going to lose faith? I've been wanting to be on TV since I was 10 years old. You know how old I was before I got on TV? 38. 28 years after I wrote it on the paper. I won't be on TV. It took me 28 years to get on TV. But it happened at an appointed time. I just never gave up the faith. I kept going because I didn't know how to quit. Because I know if I quit, it cannot happen. But if you stay with it, if you stay with it, you have no idea what can happen for you. But you got to stay with it, man. You can't quit because you get hard. You, you can't quit, man. You got to stay with it. It's somebody having it way harder than you, and they didn't give up. Will there be some times that you want to give up? Yes. But when you get into a tight spot and everything goes against you until it seems that you cannot hold on for a minute longer, never give up then, for that is just the place and time that the tide will turn. Never give up then, and that is so important. When you're working on doing the things you want to do and fulfilling your dream, and things happen, there are times when your energy feels so depleted that you want to give up that it looks just totally impossible. And I can tell you from my own personal experience, don't give up then. That's when you've got to fall forward, when life is kicking dirt in your face. Don't give up then. That's when most people turn back. If you've decided that this is what you want to do. You've got to become courageous to stand up within yourself, to face it and step forward. Are you hearing what I'm saying? You cannot stop, you cannot quit. We saw you in this room. You were not able to activate your greatness because every time a trial or tribulation comes, you fall. You give up. Every time somebody calls you and tells you you can't do it, you take it personal. Every time somebody tells you you don't have what it takes, you embrace it, and now you got to stand up to it. When the times are tough and the challenges just keep piling up, 
when your day is a museum of disappointments hanging from events that were outside of your control. When it feels like God is a babysitter that's always on the phone where you get punched in the esophagus by a fistful of life, remember that every year, two million people die of dehydration. So it doesn't matter if the glass is half full or half empty, there's water in the cup. Drink that shit and stop complaining. You see, muscle. You see, muscle. Muscle is created by repeatedly lifting things that have been designed to weigh us down. So when your shoulders feel heavy, stand up straight, lift your chin, hell, call it exercise. Remember that life is a gym membership with a really complicated cancellation policy. Remember that you will survive. Remember things could be worse. Remember we are never ever given anything that we can't handle. When the world crumbles around you, you have to look at the wreckage and then build a new one out of all the pieces that are still here. Remember you are still here, the human heart beats approximately 4,000 times per hour and each pulse, each throb, each palpitation is a trophy engraved with the words, you are still alive. You are still alive. Act like it. And I know it's been a year of many challenges throughout the world. And they keep piling up political hostilities and civil strife and the virus and economic struggles. It's been a challenging year, to say the least. But you know what? We are still here. We are still in the game. We have not been defeated. And it's not the end until you've given up. There's still hope. So stand up straight. Stand up straight and march forward. And give someone else some encouragement. Let them see you standing strong. Set an example. And if you set an example, if you lead, you know what? Other people will join in. The fortitude will spread. We will march forward together into the future. With our heads held high. Ready for whatever comes our way. And by our very posture, by our very being, we will let the world know that we are here to win.